little left hand who made it too far became a special man and we were Ziggy's band. Hello and welcome to Wars Radio 2. I'm your host, James Robert Cruz Wilder, and this is my co-host, Emily gimley Telemain hempstead Say hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said hello, Paul. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a good call. We're broadcasting right here from the Zot Show to bring you your Wars news for the second time ever. Today, we're going to be having a discussion on how you can bring wars to your friends and make friends doing it, as cheesy as that sounds. But hey, we seem to have some experience with that, wouldn't we, Emily? Yep. Yep. All right. Now, <laughs> all right, I've been planning to put the mailbag section at the end of uh, these podcasts. However, we're going to make a little bit of an exception today because we got a Facebook post from our friend Joshua Anderson, who had a little bit of comment about the first uh, Wars Radio podcast, and I think it ties right into what we want to discuss for today, so we're just going to lead in with this. All right, Joshua said two things about the Zacho broadcast. Number one, Zacho, the ship, is presumably pronounced with two hard O's, Zocho, since the name is Japanese in origin. Number two, Number one may be completely irrelevant in case of the podcast, as having a name that rhymes with nacho is funny. <sighs> yes, yes it is. <laughs> now, well, Joshua is completely right that having a name that rhymes with nacho is funny. Nacho my zacho, zacho my nacho, etc. Why we decided to mispronounce it is, well, it's an interesting point, because actually, zacho should be pronounced Zocho. Um, and if you'll note, I'm probably going to be mispronouncing quite a lot of other words throughout this podcast. Uh, we have a tendency to say kizen instead of how it's supposed to be pronounced. Kizen, for those of you not familiar, uh, kizen or kizen are the people who have sort of supernatural superpowers within the war's universe. So, it's kind of a big deal, and it's, uh, you know, it's obviously a reference to ki, the uh, life force energy that's often found in many Eastern cultures. But we decided, actually, to um, mispronounce these words because, as our American selves, most people who come into wars can't pronounce them. Um, you know, this is a problem that a lot of sci-fi universes run into because they have all sorts of made-up words. But what we found was... It annoyed the heck out of people if, while they were trying to learn about this universe, they were just getting corrected all the time by a bunch of people who would snottily say, Oh no, it's pronounced Zocho. You know, because uh, that doesn't exactly endear people to you. So we kind of fell into what I've been calling maverick pronunciation. The way I figure it, mavericks in the Wars universe who live on the fringes of space and don't give a darn about anyone else's pronunciation of things probably wouldn't be too concerned about the correct pronunciation of a bunch of Chinese, Japanese, and Korean words that they aren't familiar with. So we decided that it would probably be okay if we just let people continually mispronounce these words and if they really care later, after they already have jumped on the Wars bandwagon, then, you know, no one cares if they pronounce them correctly. That's fine. But also, you know, it shouldn't be something that's holding people back. And, well, it, it's just a habit. Saying it, Zacho, is how people would think to pronounce it. And just from looking at the word with how, you know, standard English is usually pronounced. So, we've gone with it. Yeah, I recall how... Um... Gongen used to be Gongen, but we managed to fix that eventually when everyone started just saying the right one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, eventually some of them have, um, the correct pronunciation has weaned their way in, but we still are pretty good about uh, saying everything the completely wrong way. <laughs> 
Gongen. Yeah. Gongen. Gongen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, that's just, that sounds like something you'd order at Taco Bell, doesn't it? You know, like, I want a large Gongen. Kind of. Extra cheese. The main point with all of this, though, is um, this leads into something I've been wanting to talk about, which is getting other people into wars. Uh, you know, wars is something that has brought me quite a few friends and, you know, brought me to meet a bunch of people I really, you know, wouldn't have, like, associated with beforehand, and that's nothing, like, against those people. It's just, you know, people need a reason often to get together. They it's like staying within their own little small social framework and not moving out of it, and Wars has really expanded the group of people that I've been talking to, which is a very good thing. But also, we've been pretty successful at how we've been doing it or where we are at Hanover College and being open enough about it that people are willing to join in. So that's what we're going to talk about, bringing wars to the people. I am one of those people, I guess. <laughs> yes, you are one of those people. I guess we are all one of those people. Bring in wars to the peoples. Now, when we started wars at Hanover, it started out with me just wanting to play cards against some people because I was not having money and wanted to play card games but couldn't afford to play Magic. So I went online and for about 10 bucks I got one of those cases of 12 wars decks from uh, Amazon.com or eBay, I can't remember. Then I just gave them out to my friends and were like, hey, let's play this game. So after a while, people got curious about this because the game, well, it's dead. It hasn't been made since 2005. As we were looking around for things, I remembered, wow, you know, the reason I really like this was it had short stories that went with it that I used to read all the time on the Internet, even though I couldn't buy the cards back then. So I found the stories, and that added in a whole nother group of people. But what really made the whole thing take off was when we found the Wars role-playing game made by Mongoose Publishing. Um, <laughs> Emily, how about you talk a little bit about that? Well, um, to be honest, I never was that interested in the card game because card games just aren't my thing, but I really enjoy storytelling, so once, uh, once I found out about the role-playing game. I arrived a few nights, and then two nights later, it was my very first role-playing night ever, and it was awful. But, um... <laughs> it... <laughs> but then I learned that role-playing is really fun, and, um... Wars got extremely fun after that. <laughs> yeah, but, um, I think that the important lesson to be learned there is that you're wherever you are, there are going to be, you know, different types of people. And people are going to be interested in different things. Luckily, with wars, you actually have a couple different things and activities you can do with it. Um, you know, now there's, there is already the short fiction, and now there are the new novellas by our buddies at Grail Quest Books, Long May They Live. And, you know, then you also have the role-playing game which adds a whole nother element of what you can do. You know, you can play the card game with your buddies, you can discuss the short stories with your buddies, and, you know, then you can create a whole interactive world with your friends and play in that. You know, you've got options, depending on what exactly it is you want to do with it. Um, early on when we were playing the card game, some of my friends weren't too into the whole collectible card game aspect of it, and they made up their own rules where they made it into a weird sort of Settlers of Catan board game where they laid out all the planets and you had to take them over and fight for resources, which was pretty crazy. Uh, you can actually find the rules for that on the Zacho website. But remember, it, wars, it's not something that's sacred. This is a formerly dead card game which has been resurrected now into a new property, and what exists of it, luckily you don't have to be too sacred about it. You don't have to pronounce everything correctly. You don't have to worry about, you know, giving your friends copies of the old short stories they gave out for free. Because, I mean, the stuff's there, 
And you want to support the people who are making new content, buying the novellas and that sort of thing, but what is there is there, and you know, you may as well use what you have. You've got resources. There's a whole soundtrack of songs that they gave out for free back in the day. There's all the short stories. There's just a lot to do. And it's easy to hook people in with that, because people like free stuff, as I've kind of figured out. Well, I know that if, um, if Wars was just a card game, I probably wouldn't be that interested in it. Though cards are enjoyable, and I enjoy reading them, but um, the short stories in the role-playing game have really, have really gone toward my style of fandomness, I guess. I completely get where you're coming from. Um, you know, I've always been a big TCG player, but really, it, it is kind of a niche market thing. And luckily, we're in this odd state where we have several niche market things, which are all combined together into one property. Um, and because there's so few wars things, each one is actually more important in the whole but you can get away with not using it, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what's your favorite thing with Wars, then, Emily? Honestly, my favorite thing would have to be um, just reading all of the world-building stuff, including the short fiction, but also um, the stuff that's available in the books about the world, especially Battlefront with its map part. I really enjoy that part, so... <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I think definitely the universe of wars is... It's kind of just fun to read about that kind of being in a different place sort of thing. And, well, all of the crazy shenanigans that they built up in the world. <laughs> shenanigans. Shenanigans. Like, the, really the detail on some of those RPG books is pretty incredible, even though there are only, what, three or four of them, depending on if you count that adventure module thing. Yeah. So, you know, you've got different things to choose from, different things that people like, so feel free to both tailor what you have and what you can use with wars, and just, you know, let people enjoy it. And if you're willing to attract people, then feel free to sit out and play in an open place. Or, you know, read in an open place. Being in public is where people are. <laughs> Luckily, being at college, we can do things like play out in a lobby, but, you know, if you have a favorite local game store, as is so wantonly called, you know, why not go there and try out a few games of it? Uh, and we have a local game store around Hanover called Urban Viking, and they have spots in the back for people to play RPGs. You know, while it's way more convenient for us to just play at campus, if someone were going to start a game over there, you know, it would gain attention. And that's the kind of thing that will get people to notice things about wars. And, you know, would get people interested in playing with you. So why don't we uh, switch gears for a bit, and uh, let's talk about wars fandom. Um... Wars Fandom is pretty small right now, obviously. There aren't too many of us. But, um, you know, it's a pretty devoted lot, all things considered. <laughs> yeah, especially when you're trying to eat lunch and discuss classes, and everyone comes in and starts talking about wars. It can sometimes get annoying. <laughs> yes, de definitely. Oh, but, um, it's kind of crazy to think, like, you know... We've, there's quite a few people who are now obsessed with this uh, six years dead card game slash role playing game slash series of fiction and <laughs> you know who would have thunk that I kind of thought this was dead a long time ago but here it is being back resurrected and you know uh, people have made some pretty neat stuff like uh, you Emily you've drawn some great fan art I loved your, uh, Moo Mom Little Ponies drawing. I particularly liked the Quay series. Oh, God. Uh, Quay Roses. 
I, I am so glad that we are an audio podcast, and I am not able to show pictures of that. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> so, what, what would you like to see come out of the Wars fandom? Um, we've had a little bit of fan art. We've started having some fan fiction crop up again. Um, mainly the epic of Radical Deutzel. <laughs> And a little bit of fan music, but, you know, what, what else would you like to see? Considering other fandoms have essentially everything, there isn't really a particular thing I would like to see other than, like, a fan musical. But, um, <laughs> That'd be sweet. I think simply if we had a few more people of capable ability... <laughs> have a lot of interesting things happen. <laughs> Capable ability? Yes. It's very redundant, but that's... It's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> so I see. So I see. No one is doubting that. Yeah, I, I'd like to see uh, some more fan music. <laughs> um, obviously, there was the Wars soundtrack back in the day by Kieran Yanner. But, I don't know, there's something that's just nice about being able to uh, download some songs about the universe and uh, listen to them around, kind of like the uh, the slurge of Harry Potter and Doctor Who fan bands that have shown up lately. And I will admit that I still do know all of the words to Doctor in the TARDIS and Save Ginny Weasley from the Basilisk. Wow. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Doctor Who, hey! Doctor Who, Doctor Who, hey! The TARDIS. See, we need something like that with wars. <laughs> I don't know how it would go, though. It's the title should be Gonjin Forever. Gonjin Forever. Gonjin Forever. Gonjin Forever. Fighting the Earthers for their capitalism. Too many syllables in a line. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I don't know. That'd be great. Gonjin propaganda music. Now that is quality stuff. Yeah, so what's been your uh, your favorite piece of worst fan stuff you've seen so far? That's a hard one, man. Um, I'd say in general the fan fiction been <laughs> pretty great. <laughs> Any particular work of fan fiction you'd like the best? Um, admittedly, I haven't finished reading uh, Jordan's piece. The but, Epic uh, of Deutzel? His, yes. His was lovely from uh, what I've seen. For and, all? Um, of course, Callan Cotta's story that you wrote is awesome. <laughs> uh, for all of you listening out there... Um, you should definitely check out the Epic of Deutzel Part 1 on the Zacho fandom section. It is quite the read. <laughs> you know, it's interesting, too, how, uh, you know, different people will gravitate towards different factions within wars when they're working on things. Um, you know, people just pick out their favorite thing and they kind of stick around to it. As many people know a little too much, I definitely love the Gonjin. Um, and we have... Gonjin forever. Gonjin forever. Sacho Conker. But, uh, yeah, you know, we, uh, there's quite a few Maverick lovers out there I know. Uh, we've got some Quay Docs, loving the Quay. Um, and a few Wars Muppets are into Earthers. <laughs> uh, namely the previously mentioned Joshua Anderson. He likes Earth. Not too much around where I'm at, though. Uh, very few she fanboys and fangirls, though, you know? I feel like a lot of us kind of accidentally ascribe the status of evil to some of these, uh, especially Earth for the longest time. It just seemed like, since most of our characters in the stories and stuff were... Um, yeah, she's, she's referencing our uh, the RPG we play weekly with uh the stories within that the earthers have been pretty villainous 
that... Oh, and especially to the she. I mean, our whole plot line is about how they're trying to kill all of us. Well, they kind of, they kind of are trying to... Yeah. They kind of are trying to do that within the canon of wars, though. I mean, yeah. I, we, we've given Earthers less of a fair rap, but really the she, if you're going to give one people the uh, group of villainy within wars, the she really cut the cake and eat it and then buy another just in case. <laughs> it's true. Uh, uh, you know, I think it says something that in the Wars RPG book they give... um an alternate campaign setting for if the Shi have conquered everyone and everyone is slaves for the Shi and you trying to revolt against them. It, that sounds kind of awesome, but also horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It also doesn't help that the Shi are generally in appearance what one would think when they think like some sort of video game nuke of evil that you just have to kill indiscriminately without care to their feelings. Yeah, I think the Quay actually look more evil than the she do. Yeah. And, um, you know, really I think uh, most people ascribe a lot more evil to the Quay when they're early in learning about wars until they actually learn the relationships of the Shi and the Quay to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah the whole uh, enslaving an entire species thing just uh, doesn't really go down as being too cool. Yeah. I lied. There is one thing I would like to see out of this fandom. What is that? A massive My Little Pony crossover. <laughs> you can make it happen. <laughs> it's fascinating. Didn't yeah. we? Yes, we already have a parody of the Friendship of Magic theme song. So are maybe you, we'll record that and put it up somewhere or something. Are you serious? I don't know. I don't have recording software. I was entitled. I just came up with it just now. Oh, okay. I thought you actually... Never mind. Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, so what, what would you ideally see then in this My Little Pony crossover in your wildest imagination? Well, um... The whole thing would be about how awesome friendship is, mm -hmm. and how uh, Kizen are okay, and um, and in the end, the she would learn the error of their ways, and everyone would live peacefully. Yeah, it's good. Moo my little pony, moo my little pony. <laughs> oh yeah, I do remember we did make up words to that. Yes. Want to sing that together? No, not right now. Come on. Man. <laughs> sorry, man. Come on. I'm sorry. Okay, fine. I will point out that we have ascribed races to all of these ponies already. Though, admittedly, they they are kind of awkward sometimes because mavericks don't just grow wings to become pegasi when they defect or lose their horns when they defect, so some of the races are kind of awkward. <laughs> so I see. <laughs> yeah, I, I was impressed that uh, there were quay ponies, but that's another story. Uh, <laughs> I always have the weirdest fan art. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> yeah, and, and you can check out a little bit of that fan out at the uh, Zot Show, as pretty much everything else we've talked about can be found at like I'm a broken record with referencing the website you're already listening to this true from, but, you know. <laughs> Maybe they haven't seen the ponies. They should see the ponies. It's important. I mean, it's Torico and, Star and Starhawk. I mean, what? As ponies. What go wrong with that? Well, um, from the property itself, some sort of TV show, movie, short film thing would be very readily accepted by me. Yes. Especially if it starred Torgo and Starhawk. Oh, God, yes, absolutely. 
I would love to see a Wars television series, um, animated, live action, whatever, puppets. I'm not picky. Yeah. You know, um, of course, you know, they're, uh, they are trying to make a Wars animated series, for those of you who haven't, uh, kept up on the news. Uh, we haven't heard too much about it lately, but, you know, fingers are still crossed on that. That would be awesome. Wouldn't it just? Man, I would watch, like, if that was a children's television show, I would watch Saturday morning cartoons all the time. It would be great. I already watched those. Then, no change. <laughs> Yeah, if they're right into your schedule, you know, no real work would have to be done. Um, something I haven't mentioned previously that I probably should have in terms of me getting into wars is that normally I don't like sci-fi universes that much, but this one was an exception, I think, in part because it was so interesting in itself, and secondly because all of my friends were in it, so, um... If anyone has any friends that they think, oh, they don't really like sci-fi that much, or they don't care about war as well, just throw all of that stuff into a pile before them, and maybe they'll find something that they like. It's been an effective strategy so far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing which has worked out really well is I've been making what we call war CDs, where... Anytime we want to get someone into wars, we'll basically just make a CD that has all of the short stories and the soundtrack and a bunch of uh, the art that we've managed to find online and uh, putting it all on just a CDR, burning it, and they can carry it home and enjoy the pleasures of reading, listening, and looking at art in their own privacy. Truth. Wasik boy. What? That's embarrassing. Why do you keep saying that? It's the first time I've said it this podcast. Well, it's already too many. What? Wasagoy? <laughs> you have something that's Gonjin, huh? No, 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 nothing against Gonjin. <laughs> yeah. I think it's important that we uh, teach our listeners some probably badly pronounced Chinese. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So, in conclusion, we can basically sum up that Wars is accessible to a lot of people with a lot of different things. You can easily, you know, give stuff to your buddies, and there's probably lots of things that they might be interested in, and even if they're not interested in some of it, there's probably something that you just throw enough that somebody's going to latch on to. Sound about right? Yeah. All right. Well, then I guess we'll call this one a wrap. I've been your host, James Robert Cruz Wilder from the Zot Show, and this has been my co-host. And we can really tell the main hint stuff because apparently everyone has to say my full name. Indeed. Indeed, everybody does. Because here at Wars Radio 2, one middle name isn't good enough. All right, so thank you for listening, and please tune in next time when we'll have more adventures in Warsdom. Coming up in the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about what happened to wars back in the day, and how did that impact it and impact us now. We'll be talking about the current run of wars fiction, and we'll be having an interview with Nathan Patrick Butler, the author of Earther 1, Healers and Hunters, and the upcoming Earther 2. So, please stay tuned in, and keep listening to Wars Radio 2.
right.